What's up, everybody? It's Buffalo Ben 15 Golf back at it again. And today brings us to the Pleasant Hills Golf Club out in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. I played this round on October 23rd, 2022. It was an absolutely gorgeous day to play. 67 degrees out um, at its warmest point. On this tee, it was probably about 55, 57, something like that. It was absolutely perfect October day to play, though. And um, I was really looking forward to playing this new course. I'd never played Pleasant Hills before uh, this round. And that is definitely how you want to start off uh, your relationship with a new course. Piping it right down the middle. Gotta love it. So here we are on the fairway. I, um, a pretty um, uphill and side hill lie here. Ball way above my feet. Really had to choke up on this five wood. Yeah, as you can see, there's that curve. Um, really pronounced hill there handled it really well and on a par five first hole of the day we are greenside chipping for eagle yeah this is um this is shaping up to maybe not be so bad you know sometimes new courses don't go that well so um hopefully we can change that trend with pleasant hills here today guys so those four pine trees, nice vantage point to aim at, too. I'm aiming between that second and third one. Well, we got it there. <laughs> like I oh, said, mission so accomplished. That. And, um, yeah, totally talked myself into that shot. You know, it was um, a shot that it was um, super uphill. I wanted to make sure I got it there. But then when I realized the pin is, like, as far back as you could possibly put it on this green without your ball just rolling without you touching it because that's how pronounced the slope is like this needs to like be on like its final rotation heading off of this fringe guys this is a ridiculously tough chip shot i could have avoided it too oh. Not much so I can do there, eh? Right? No one wanted to see that. No one. I did exactly what I wanted to do. Did not think that was possible. I should know by now that in golf, anything is possible. Even the most tragic and most unlucky things are possible. And that's exactly what you guys just saw here. So now, this putt is just so downhill. We are, we're, we're talking like two feet below where I'm standing while the putt's only 10 feet away. It's absolutely ridiculous. And uh, that's something I faced this whole day, as you guys are going to see. The greens at Mount, or excuse me, the greens at Pleasant Hills, not Mount Pleasant Hills, um, they were ridiculous. They rolled better than almost any public course green I had ever seen. Um, I was amazed at how well they were rolling in October, and I was amazed at how much undulation they had. Um, so, obviously that putt goes terribly, because why would we make it, right? Can we at least make the comebacker? No, of course we can't. Because that's not how this works, right? It's never how it works. So just out of nowhere, we go from chipping for eagle to getting a double. There's the bad start we're familiar with. That was the most unlucky shot I've ever hit. The fact that that got hung up on the fringe, that sucked. That's, that's, that was wrong. You want to know why you don't see that many morning rounds out of me? Well, number one, 
I don't get up that early. And number two, stuff like that, stuff where your ball is supposed to roll out, stuff where you know you did everything right, you get screwed because the grass is wet and slow. So instead of I could have easily just left that chip below the hole 10 feet to putt up for par. But we we don't we don't do things the easy way, right? I mean, why why would we want to, you know? Golf's not supposed to be easy. You're supposed to make it easy, but I definitely haven't mastered that. Um, and even as you see here, after a great drive in the fairway here, um, but still a really tough lie just uh, with how much undulation there is in the fairway. Um, they don't call it Pleasant Hills for nothing. This course does have some elevation change, especially on the front nine. The back nine, not so much. Not the back nine's nine the a bit longer. I said, that's not but bad uh, the front nine, nine the is a lot hillier. You have to... Um, Really um, know when to spin the ball, know when to not spin the ball, uh, things like that. And you guys are going to see here, this is one of those cases where I needed to spin the ball more because this putt coming back up the hill swings so much, and you got to take as much slope out of it as you can sometimes. And um, I thought I read this fine, but just absolutely nowhere That's even a terrible close. Goal shot from where he was. So obviously this putt's going to be massively uphill. So the break here is just unbelievable. This green might be the most undulating green I have played this year. I'm not kidding. I know the camera flattens things out, but you guys are going to see what this putt does, and you guys are going to have your jaws drop to the floor. Oh, that took a little peek. Is it too much spin? goes from about six inches away oh, yeah. to that. I mean, that got within a half foot. Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, when was the last time you saw a putt do that? I hit that. You saw that stroke. I have been working on my putting stroke like we were talking about. Colin Hampton and I have been working on it a ton. And as you saw there, it was, it looked really nice. Come back. It wasn't oh, jerky, it wasn't time. stabby. Man, I, I gave that such a good roll. That was going straight towards the hole. Just a little short. Think I'm just going to go up and tap in for bogey? Nope, absolutely not. Because so far, the, this day has just had everything that could possibly go wrong, go wrong. So I'm hating golf. Right yeah, two over through four. Not good. Ah, a little reprieve. <laughs> well, I mean, the first hole is like 470 par 5, but still. I'm, I'm not going to count my chickens before they hatch, though. I, I, I want to play this hole smart. A driver is definitely the play. It's open enough. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do. And um, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we can get it down there. I'm sure the green's absolutely ridiculous, but we'll see. Every golfer's dream, every golfer's perfect scenario after having an absolutely horrendous starting two holes is a drivable par four where they can just rip it. And boy, do I hear, guys. I mean, this was really close to being ripped i just caught it a little bit high in the face didn't go as um far as i wanted it to didn't get all the way up onto the green but as you see here yeah this 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 is this is more my kind of pace just knocking it up there by the green having a chip for eagle hopefully this time it doesn't take us five to get down but um we learned our lesson from the first time. Don't be too aggressive. Um, and just let the green do the work. Let the slopes do the work. You know that they're going to do what you think they're going to do with how nice the greens are. 
And boy, did they almost give me an eagle there, guys. That is honestly probably one of the closer calls that you guys have seen to me getting an eagle. That Like, that thing went right by the flag. Like, we're talking less than a ball um, away from catching a piece of that flag and possibly falling in. Um, instead, we got this putt up the hill. As you see there, just the same kind of deal with number two. Just leave it a little bit short. But, I mean, as much as I wanted a birdie there, I cannot be upset with par considering the start that I had. We're headed in the right direction. Oh, so well, there, gotta, that's good. I mean, par's, oh, par's good. We got to have something start going for us, right? So off to another sub-300 par four. Um, on this front nine here. This time it's a little uphill, though. I wouldn't say that this one is drivable. Uh, you got some OB on the right. Those trees on the left caught in a little bit more. So this definitely is a tougher tee shot. And as you see, yeah, I just get that one a little too high, and the wind just kind of stops a little bit. Yeah, it only carried 230. Um, and uh, I definitely felt as though I hit it a little bit better than that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I tell you, that was the same shot as hole number three, you know, the same tee shot. I hit the same trajectory, the same part on the face, you know, and you see it's like a 45-yard difference. That just goes to show how much wind and uphill um, can affect your ball flight and can affect how far you hit it. So um, always remember, guys, it does more than you think it will. And um, I definitely should have thought that, too, on this pitch up from about 60 yards. Yeah, this green is kind of a big punch bowl. The pin, though, was on the extreme right side of this green, like way up on the shelf to the point where you could almost, you could almost um, lay your club down and the gap between the fringe and the pin wouldn't be that much more than your longest club Four length. And uh, as you see here, another absolutely yeah, yeah, awful putt that just comes right back to my feet. I am starting to wonder now, how are all of these pins on these nutty ridges, how are all of the putts... I mean, granted, that one, that stroke was a little lighter. I would say that um, this one, I do deserve to be as far away as I am, but number two guys that, that I know that first putt was the big long lag putt, but that second putt, I put a great stroke on that thing and it came right back to my feet. And I was thinking, what is going on? Yeah. And as you see here, another mid ranger that just doesn't drop here for me, we're just getting to that point now where. Every time we get to that spot, my just confidence is just dwindling and dwindling. And uh, you can't let that boil over. You can't let yourself get apathetic. You can't let that anger boil over. And um, as you can tell in my tone of voice, I'm doing an okay job of that. Um, through these first four holes, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm five over. But at the same time, I still got 13 more holes to go. With the way I'm striking the ball, I'm happy with it. I know I can get this back, you know? So heading into this um, fifth hole, par three, which is probably the signature hole at Pleasant Hills, or one of two signature holes. You guys will see the second signature hole coming up fairly shortly. Um, bunker guarding the front right side of the green, out of bounds only about 10 yards away from the rightmost uh, edge of the green and water immediately left so not a tight window and as you can see here even after a pretty decent tee shot like normally this proximity to the hole um about 40 feet here maybe 50 feet from 155 160 yards normally that's not too bad um but when you've got a bunker to go over and water behind the pin it causes some problems for you and as you see here just absolutely horrible absolutely luck terrible. caught the fringe cut right between how in the world the is that just done that i'm getting nothing going my way this front now absolutely nothing i gotta fight somehow though so stepping up to this chip shot now 
uh, straight uphill, like we were talking about earlier. Don't get too aggressive. But at the same time, this is such a short chip shot that you almost don't want to swing so soft, you know? Like, you get to a point where it's like, yeah, maybe this is too short of a chip shot. And that just goes to show how tough the pin placements were today. So, yeah, as you can see, I hardly... I hardly even touched that ball. You know, like, that was not a big stroke at all. And this as you see, it goes real way long of the hole. And uh, now we got a slick seven-footer down the hill for uh, our bogey. Yeah, not even for par, guys. I know this round sucks. On top of that, guys, with how slick this putt was, I could easily three-putt this. Well, his mind must be racing at the moment, mustn't it? What am I doing? What have I done? Got to make a shot here. No really other way to say it. Oh, dear. This is really... This is... Uh, this is so, 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 so sad. And so unnecessary. Surprise... Surprise. Another mid-ranger missed. And guess what? Now we got another one because of it. Oh, oh can you believe it? That is absolutely stunning. It might be like Greenskeeper's Revenge Day or something. Seriously? It took you that long to figure that out. Yeah, that would explain the crazy hole locations. That being the outing that I'm going in front of. I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, what a greenskeeper's revenge outing is. It's basically when a course plays so difficult and there are hazards added by the greenskeeper. Um such as maybe in-course out-of-bounds. Some courses go really crazy with them, but um, look at me going crazy with my driver still. But anyways, um, some courses, um, they'll put, like, leaf blowers on the green. They'll do some like crazy had, stuff. Like whatever yardage um, need, but the biggest thing like is their whole locations rise, are crazy. Where I know, uh, where I know um, how hard, to, how, how far back to take it, like here, 70 playing uphill uh pin slightly in front so that takes away a couple yards but the uphill cancels it out and then you got like wind so it's playing like 73 74 instead of 70. so instead of here i go to like here just talking to you guys a little bit about my strategy Perfect. how i hit partial wedges um I mean, I feel like, apart from the 9-iron, which obviously isn't a wedge, I feel like my partial wedges have been decent today. And as soon as I say that, what happens? As Stewie from Family Guy would say, wheat thins over the green. Unbelievable. After such a good drive, man. It's like, no matter what I do, I can't get a par. Like, there's always something on a hole that goes wrong that pro prohibits me from getting a par. It's It just doesn't make sense, you know? And at this point, I, my head was just spinning. I was just trying to focus as much as I possibly could. And this is actually a good ball. This is actually a really good pitch shot uh, back from... Uh, I think I was actually on the seventh tee when I hit this. Um uh, I'll be over there again soon enough. I mean, hey, that's a positive. I got to take a look at the next tee box, right? Um, but yeah, as you can see, guys, really cool view here. Decided to uh, keep the zoomed out a little bit. I don't know if you look real close, you can see the wind turbines in the distance. I thought that looked really cool at the top of this hill here. Um, and I'm putting uphill again. Another uh, uphill right to left, or let's see if I can finally get it right. Of course he did. <laughs> we needed something, guys. We needed something. 
and there it was. Up and down. That was a that was a green light to not fiddle with the brake too much. Big uphill, straight, kind of straight putt there. Took advantage. And immediately after that puck goes in, I tell you guys, sometimes it's all it takes is just one shot to just change your whole mind and your outlook about this round. Now I'm thinking, okay, there's three holes left on this nine, a par three and two medium length par fours. Now, if I can par out, this is a par 35 front. So if I par out and I'm currently at seven over, I just got to stop talking, don't I? Every time I say something about, ooh, I'm doing good, all things are turning my way, then I hit a chunkzilla like that, man. Well, I understand the last one was a thin, but geez. Now we got a two-way miss going on? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. So <laughs> um, stepping up to this um, other partial wedge shot now. Hopefully I don't thin this one. Ball below my feet once again. Pick it real nice this time. Really well judged shot from where I was. Kind of a hanging lie. Still kind of wet the ground is. Those trees on the left of the uh, seventh tee kind of blocked out this rough more than some other spots. So the ground was a little bit wetter than I thought it would be, even though at this point it was almost 11 o'clock. Um, but we did real well with it and we've given ourselves to get this par back another mid-ranger the story of the day is just putts between eight and 20 feet looks good <sighs> but it's not good <laughs> ah man another bogey eight over through seven just couldn't believe it so now i'm thinking okay I got two par fours. Let's par out. Let's get 43. That's still, that's not good, but that's semi respectable still, I suppose, for a new course, being Greenskeeper's Revenge Day. But let me tell you, this par four is very tough to get a par. Blind tee shot if you take driver because the fairway dog legs sharp at about 190. And uh, kind of at the right edge of your screen was. Um, the kind of line for where the fescue starts. As you can see, I'm well left of that. It's, it drew back. It was an absolutely fine tee shot. Um, like so I probably should not have taken driver um, the first time I ever played it. There's water all the way down the left. It creeps in ya, on you so much sooner than it looks uh, because it's uphill to get to the to get over the hill that then leads to the water. And then you've got, as you see, um, you just see where those kind of bushes, those kind of little cattails pop up on the left side of your screen. You see how they kind of jut in twice? Yeah, so there's a lot of little um, notches in the fairway that you have to be careful to not run through and go into the water. So that was actually a, a much more impressive drive than I thought. Um, and if I ever come back to do another golf vlog here, play another round here, you guys will not be seeing me take driver on that tee shot. I can tell you that. But there are, I, I, I admit, there are some rewards to taking that risky shot because as you see it, with fun. this upcoming putt, you guys are going to see how severe this green slopes from front to back. In just this little five-foot putt, you want to have the spin necessary to hold it on the green. Yeah, eight, the eighth hole at Pleasant Hills is a very tough hole. I should have been more uh, proud and more positive of having this putt for par. That just creeps low of the hole. Oh, man. Couldn't have given that better pace. That was perfectly the distance of where the hole was away. Just going to demonstrate for you here how perfect you have to be when putting to tough pins like this. Watch this. Yeah, because that's, that's what happens if I hit it too hard, though. And then it does that. 
absolutely unbelievable, guys. I mean, I took that second putt probably a degree further back in my backswing. And look how much farther it went. Yeah, that's Greenskeeper's Revenge for you. Beyond recognition pins. This course was set up to where I couldn't even put a handicap score on. And I certainly don't feel like a handicap player after that drive. That is a scratch golfer level drive. That's where we want to be. That's the drive we needed on three to reach the green. But... The timing just hasn't been there today, guys. A lot of things have happened in the wrong sequence. I think we can all agree to that up till this point. Because even though I'm 9 over, I feel like my ball striking has been absolutely stellar today. Apart from maybe one or two really badly hit shots. Like Other than the chunk on 7 and the thin on 6. I mean, look at this, guys. Uh hanging line the fairway below your feet and you still take a nice divot get it on the center of the green that's where we need to be guys that's the four handicap golf that i need to be playing that i wanted to get to last year but obviously that didn't happen i'm still a 7.5 but um you know it's 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 always a work in progress right i mean that's just golf so a big long putt here on a two-tier green, and I don't get down the tier because I'm scared because of how fast and how excellent the greens are, and uh, that happens. So now we have another mid-ranger. This time, instead of uphill uh, right to left, it's downhill left to right, so maybe I'll have better luck with that variety. Let's take a look. I gave it really nice pace. I really did like the pace I gave that. Um, I was definitely getting used to it a lot more. And that concludes one of the worst nines that you guys have seen on this channel. But oddly enough, guys, it didn't feel too bad. You know, like three out of seven fairways, that's not awful. You know, like that's... And, and I mean, hole number eight, it was still a good drive. Uh... Numbers three and four were still in really good shape after the tee shot. Number six was as well. I mean, I had no bad tee shots on that front nine. Like, the ball striking off the tee was great. The greens and regulation are definitely a little low, though. I do need to be better with those. But, I mean, you saw the partial wedges other than that one thin on six. They were nice. You know, the chip on three was good. The one on four just didn't get up the ridge, just came back down, but it was still hit well. Um, the one on nine was good, uh, center of the green. I, I just didn't, I just didn't know that the pin was as far back as it was just because I, I couldn't see the whole pin. Um, uh, and I thought that, you know, that little flag below to mark where it is was further back, was further down than I, than it ended up being. Uh, but you know, guys, Sometimes it's just not your day, and this definitely was not my day. And looking back at this, I'm not super mad about it because it's like it ended up being a really interesting experiment. It ended up being a really interesting test to see what is the biggest equalizer in golf. Is it wind? Is it cold? Is it heat? Is it rain? I'd venture to say that it's pin locations because – with the, I mean, I think you guys can agree. The swing looked fine. The putting stroke looked fine. With the way I was hitting the ball. Now, sure, I made maybe some management errors on holes one and hole five. But the ball striking did not look like someone who shoots 45 on a 2,800-yard nine. It didn't. But sometimes, guys, the course is just playing tough. Sometimes you get tough breaks. I didn't handle them as well as I needed to, and this is what happens. So you guys are going to see that the back nine compared to the front nine is even tougher than this nine. Yeah, um, the back nine could get ugly, very ugly. I saw a not-a-scratch golfer uh, can, at Quintero when he played there. He shot 106. 
yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't say we're going to do that bad, but I would say that something higher than what we've seen on the channel before is definitely in play with how um, crazy some of the pins are going to be. You guys are going to see them. Um, the camera won't hide these, by the way. Um, so, yeah, that's how nutty they are. Um, so, at the same time, though, going into this back nine, I felt like, okay, the front nine was terrible. I know I'm not going to break 80. How can I still um, accomplish things that I want to accomplish? And it helped me kind of loosen up. It helped me not be too nitpicky with shots. It helped me not try to get too perfect with my putt reading. It um, get and, and just leave more of that trust in my stroke along with the partial wedges. You guys are going to see that I carry that pretty decently into this back nine. Um, and uh, you guys are going to see some crazy shots that I managed to hit. And also some crazy shots that may not go my way. But all in all, I'm looking forward to posting it. Um, I apologize with how long this video has gotten. I'm going to shut up now. And um, yeah, guys, spring 2023 is here. I'm already starting to make new content. Can't wait to, can't wait to uh, get it up for you guys. This is Buffalo Ben 15 signing off. Have a good day, everyone.